Kalispera, good evening. Uh, my name is Marius Psaras and I am the, uh, the Cultural Counselor of the Cyprus High Commission and Artistic Director of the Cyprus Short Film Day. Um, first of all, I would like to thank you all for being here at this spe very special evening, which constitutes one of the flagship events of the cultural section of the Cyprus High Commission, held under the auspices of His Excellency, the High Commissioner, Mr. Euripides Evriviadis. Unfortunately, and despite his expressed will to attend the event this afternoon. The High Commissioner's heavy schedule for today, as you all know, is the centenary celebration of the Armistice and the Remembrance Day. So this heavy schedule has not allowed him to be here tonight, but he would like to welcome you all to the event and wish you an enjoyable evening. What started as a humble initiative to bring Cypriot cinema and Cypriot filmmakers to London three years ago has rapidly grown into an annual celebration of cinema met, made not only by filmmakers from Cyprus but also by UK-based or UK-born Cypriot filmmakers. And this gives us great joy as CSFD has been established as a meeting point for Cypriot filmmakers, a platform for them to share their vision and work with a broader audience, as well as a venue for the British audience to familiarize themselves with Cypriot cinema and appreciate its very particular sensitivities. It is important to note that the Cyprus Show Film Day is an initiative that was instantly embraced by the cultural section of the High Commission of Cyprus in London by my predecessor, Ms. Dr. Achilles Hajikiriakou, who is here with us tonight, and I especially thank him. But it was equally instantly embraced and supported by the cultural services of the Ministry of Education and Culture of Cyprus, particularly by the Senior Officer for the Arts, Dr. Elena Chrysodoulidou, whom I also like to thank. But there, but there is also a great team working behind the scenes to bring you this day, a team that has been working really hard for the past few months and today. That is Christos, Anna, Fotis, Yorgos, Taz, Mishto, Katerina, Christina. Thank you very much, guys. Short film is no longer the underappreciated offspring of the film industry. Considering the massive developments in digital technology, new horizons open to everyone who wants to express themselves through the power of the moving image. For creatives, short film is one of the most accessible means of artistic expression, through which they can communicate their vision, express their opinion, inspire and be inspired, and even under difficult conditions and limited or no funds. CSFD 2018 features 13 short films, a record number this year, including films that have been screened and won awards in major film festivals around the world. The films have been selected in collaboration with the International Short Film Festival of Cyprus, and I would like to especially thank here the ISFFC's artistic directors Alexia Reuter and Ioakim Milonas for their invaluable help. If there is a connecting thread between so many different in content and form films this year, this is their relentless urge to break or cross boundaries or borders, whether these are physical, ideological or formal. Many films take on topical issues, social and political issues, such as migration, diaspora and the refugee crisis, while others deal with more personal inner urges to break free or cross lines. This year's program is colourful and diverse in many respects, not only in terms of content but also in terms of form, as testified by the various genres of the films. Com comedy, documentary, animation, stop motion, drama, coming of age, thriller, horror and others. But the good thing with short films is that they can easily break the boundaries of the medium, mix genres, experiment with the form and offer new kinds of cinematic pleasure. I can't wait to hear about the experience and thoughts of our own filmmakers who are here today with us and who will join me in a panel discussion and Q&A after the end of the second screening. So stay with us and may you enjoy a lovely Cyprus Short Film Day 2018. Before I give cue to the first screening for today, please note that during break you may go to the private dining room on my right hand side, follow up the steps and it's at the back of this um, room. Um, for some complimentary refreshments, so enjoy the show. <laughs>
I hope you have enjoyed uh, our films. Now allow me to call on stage uh, Pandelis Hapeshis, director of Happy Valentines. Pandelis? Yeah. Andreas Sheitanis, director of Fishbowl. And uh, we have to welcome Andreas, who has traveled all the way from Cyprus, especially for our event. And Anthony Petru, director of AB. I'm going to ask a couple of questions and then we will open the uh, floor to the audience. Um, so firstly, I would like to hear about your source of inspiration. A vampire m movie? <laughs> um, thank you. Um, I, uh, there wasn't much inspiration to this story, to be honest. Um, it was just an idea that came in my head. I was getting close to um, some uh, short film festival deadlines and I went, all right, which idea am I going to go with? I've got to do one. And I just went for that one. And it's actually uh, very opposite to um, a lot of the genres that I like. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Yes. What are the genres that you... That you uh, not really horror uh, or sort of... Uh, sort of that psychological kind of, yeah, genre. But I thought, if that's something I don't like, let me try do it, who knows, maybe it'll turn out interesting. <laughs> so I hope it, I hope it did. <laughs> that was my sort of strategy with it. Yeah, no, really interesting. <laughs> uh, but um, in your uh, short bio, I see that you are an admirer of Tarantino, so maybe some blood spilling is out there. Is yes, of... yes, absolutely. Um, he um, uh, certainly very um, uh, dialogue heavy Tarantino, yeah. but I like uh, I, I like his visual directing a lot, and um, he draws from um, Sergio Leone as well, who I really admire, and I think he really invented s something for himself. So I, I sort of like. Uh, directors who have their own kind of style going on. Yes. And you see that style sort of again and again over their, their work. So, yeah. Um, Pandelis is the son of uh, Michael Hapeshi, is the director of, uh, of the film that we have watched today, The Insignificant Life of Eleni Pavli, which resonated with many of us here tonight. And um, unfortunately, Michael couldn't be here. I, I want to ask you, did you participate in that production in any way? Yes, yes. Yes, I did help out in that film. Um, so you got it from your father? Is it like uh, it runs in the family, the filmmaking? Uh, probably, yes. Um, yeah, I, I used to actually uh, want to be a comedian for a long time. And then I sort of went into uni and I realized how incredible it was actually to sort of try and tell a story visually. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I sort of fell in love with that as well. But yeah, hopefully comedy stuff will also come <laughs> ahead, but we'll see. Great, great. Yes. Great. Thank you. Andreas, what, what was your source of inspiration? And also I have in my notes here, is this a dystopian future kind of film or is it more like a psychological allegory of something? It's not on. It is. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, first of all, I want to congratulate you for organizing this amazing, beautiful event. And I want to thank uh, all of you for coming and watching our films. It's the reason we make films for, to share them with an audience. So thank you. Um, yeah, it is sort of an allegory, I guess. Yeah, I hope it's not uh, this <laughs> the future. Um, many people think that uh, it's a film about loneliness. Uh, people have asked me that before, if I was lonely when I made that. <laughs> when uh, the film is more about, well, I made that film when I was uh, sort of, not the best place in my life, mentally, mainly. Um, I had a 
job. I had a decent job, but uh, we had a lot of pressure. The working conditions weren't great. Uh, where there was a lot of, of bullying, I guess, uh, mental bullying. There was a lot of pressure. We couldn't, I couldn't sleep at night. So did my coworkers. It was, it, it wasn't the best. But it was while the financial crisis was going on in Cyprus, and a lot of people had lost their jobs. Uh, my per, my dad included. He was unemployed, uh, and there was this feeling that you couldn't really complain. Like if you had a job, you were considered lucky. Mm -hmm. So we we're all trying to convince ourselves that we were happy with what we had and that everything was fine. And that's sort of like the mental state. I started noticing it uh, with other people as well, that we had that very mediocre life. Uh, like the, the, the they weren't satisfied by their jobs, what they were doing. The, they wanted to do so much more with their lives, but they were just content with what they had. They were trying to convince themselves that, OK, what we have is, is fine. We're happy. We you know, just go you know, day by day and day by day. And you definitely found a very creative way to channel I that experience. So. I hope so. Thank you. Anthony, first of all, what's AB? Um, AB? The B. Oh, what, what is the title? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just about the B. So it's AB, and it's also my um, daughter's first two initials. Okay. And she, she was one of the main reasons I, I wanted to make that film, and also to because I normally work with live action film, as you mm -hmm. know. So I wanted to uh, experiment with um, animation. And uh, was it the first project of yours, animation? Yeah, this is the first animated film I've worked. worked How on. different is it from live action? Um, I thought it would be a lot easier, but yeah. it isn't. Um, it's the, they both have their own their similar hurdles and difficulties. Um, I, I enjoy working with live action film more than I did with animation, but it was, a, it was, imagine if I had to film going through the, the getting on a train, jumping in a, yeah. in a, it wouldn't have happened. So I guess it allows you to be, uh, you know, be able to achieve more in terms of your, your story, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, it was. It, I, I really enjoyed it. It was a time when I didn't have. It was just at the end of finishing my, the sound, and uh, I had a bit of time, so I, yeah, wrote the story and then worked with Bense, an animator, and we we made it happen. Okay, mm. great. And uh, guys, I wanted to ask you about um, source of funding. How do you get funding for your films? I know. <laughs> uh, it's all self-funded. So, uh, yeah, it's all self-funded, my stuff. Mm -hmm. Andreas? Uh, yeah, same. Uh, self-funded. Uh, my dad is a credit as a producer because he helped me out a bit. Um, you know, asking for favors, asking for people if they want to help. Uh, yeah. uh, Jeff is here in the audience, was a cinematographer. He, I flew him from London to Cyprus to film that, but I couldn't, obviously I couldn't, I didn't pay him, I couldn't pay him, couldn't afford paying, giving him a salary. And he thank had to- Thank you, Jeff. Yeah, thank <laughs> you. And uh, he had to take uh, days off work, I had to take days off work, many other people took days off work. So it's not just uh, like spending your own money, you're also losing salary, you're also losing from other, yeah, so you know. It's tough, but it's worth it. Yeah, oh, of yeah, course. I was yeah, going to ask that. So, it. why do we do it? <laughs> what else are you going to do? Yeah. yeah, it's either this or I don't know. Or nothing. <laughs> yeah, Pandelis. I'll take this microphone this time. Yeah. Sorry about that. That's fine. Um, yeah, same, same answer. There you go. Self-funded as well. Put, um, put all the money in myself, and made it. Uh, although, to be fair, also, uh, I'd sort of. Along with being a filmmaker, I also do video editing. Mm. So I, I've, I've obviously network, know people. So a few people jump on board and just kind of gave it in kind help, kind of way. Um, the cinematographer is a good friend of mine, Damien Kwasnik. Um, he, uh, we shot it on the Sony FS7, uh, which is a great camera, uh, and uh, which actually one of the other films also was shot on. I saw and maybe a few of the others, I guess. Um, and he literally brought all his equipment 
and everything lights, everything, and did everything for free for me. And actually, he was the only one that wasn't paid. <laughs> but I'm paying him back in other ways. I think it's an exchange of labor. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so that doesn't sound weird, yeah. Uh, no, not in that yeah, way. Yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> Although it did sound like that. <laughs> so, um, do you have questions from the audience? <clears throat> <laughs> Katerina? Oh, um, well, really? Okay. Um, uh, I was going to say it's about the vampire, um, the, the, the film. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, I really liked it. Um, Thank you. I, and it didn't, show, it, it didn't show that you didn't, you're not really into the, film, um, the uh, horror genre at all. I mean, look, it was really crisp, it was really clean, it was really simple. It was good. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, and it was really good. I was, it's I, not really a question, but... You know. No, that's all right. <laughs> well, I'll tell you something funny about that. I was, okay, I, I was actually told by someone before I made that film, but not like directly before, like years ago, by a friend of mine who's a musician, he sa his name is Senna, he said to me that he had a friend who uh, told him, uh, so sorry, my friend Senna, he makes music that is much different to the music he liked. And he was told by a friend of his that you're coming at it from a different angle because it's not really the kind of thing you like. So I was like, hmm, how do I turn that into making films? So I don't know, but we'll see. E eventually, I don't know. I think it's gotta, it's gonna turn into the things I do like, probably. <laughs> but you just give it a go, see what happens. Cool. We have another question here. Le give us a second. Okay. So it's about the insignificant life of Eleni Pavli. For me, the message is that the Greek Cypriot, the second and third generation of the Greek Cypriot that are in London they start uh, to not to feel as part of Cyprus. And I don't know what is, how we're going to make them to feel part of Cyprus. Uh, I'm not sure if I would agree with you. I don't know, Bandelis, would you like to answer that? Okay. You, 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 you have your personal experience of that. I mean, more than I Yes, um, I'm kind of middle ground, to be honest, because I, w I lived in Cyprus till I was 10, then came over. Um, sort of, so I kind of had the best of both worlds. Um, it's your, your, where you're from is always in your heart, uh, no doubt, but I guess um, you just start seeing that there's a much bigger world out there mm -hmm. and that uh, you can't hold yourself back to <coughs> just that place, but it, it's always a part of you and who you are and yeah, and it helps you become bigger than what you are. I think it's the emotional tension of being an immigrant where you have two homes or no home. I, I think the, the message of the film was somewhere in the middle. I wish you ha we had your dad here to, <laughs> to answer better than, but that's the message that I got and I think many of us uh, here um, got the same feeling. Yeah, at the back, Katerina. I just want to comment to the question raised by the previous commentator about the retention of the identity among the second and third generation. In the film, if I remember correctly, the family was not anymore going to Cyprus for holidays. They were going somewhere else. Now, I'll give you a personal thing. I'm the only Cypriot in my family. My wife is from Canada. My daughter, born here, is married to an Englishman, and I have two grandchildren. I take them to Cyprus regularly, and that's how they created and want to enhance their connection with Cyprus. Thank you, Thank you very much for this comment. We have the, uh, we have the um, composer of Insignificant Life here. Would you like to, uh, to say something about the film? Thank you. Uh, well, I think, uh, Michael, what you wanted to say was just uh, convey the, the feeling of the, of the everyday life, the reality of, uh, 
of uh, immigrants following to the life of this woman. Uh, I'm not sure if he wanted to make any, any more comments than that, just to, to show how, how she feels about that. I don't know if, if Pantelis has, has something more to say. Uh, the only thing I could say is because in many ways I don't feel the same way uh, as certain feelings he has. I would just say perhaps it, 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 that film is made of certain feelings that he has and he brought out in a certain way, obviously inspired by a story, as it said at the end, of his a friend of his, Helen Bavli, who is also in the film industry. And uh, as he said, the stories of, of, of her dad and his battle with, with um, dementia. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. So it varies. Um, we have a question from Elena, whom we saw on the screen at the last film. On Hi, it's not a question, it's more of a, an answer, a response to the previous um, question. I've studied that area on ethnic identity and how we Greek Cypriots form this identity in England because, as you saw in the film, we are neither Greek Cypriot or British because we have this internal battle on how we construct our own identity and essentially we have formed this sort of hybrid language so a uh, hybrid culture as well where we we don't speak one language say if we were speaking with someone from our culture who is also British we would we use different words we use a it's a unique sort of language where other people who are from Cyprus or half from Greece or wherever they are, they are kind of astonished by the way we speak, the language we use, because I think most of us Greek Cypriots, British born Greek Cypriots, we combine the, both the English and the Greek language and we sort of do it with our ethnic identity as well. We combine the two and as it said, we are neither both. We are unique. We are who we are. Bravo, and Elena. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the prejudice uh, slowly, or gra I don't know, the linguist is here could help us, but um, I, my personal experience is that the prejudice is fading away in a, in a way. I, um, I, because, I mean, people are traveling back and forth all the time, so we collaborate on so many levels. Um, I don't know, that's my personal experience. Achilleas. Um, first of all, let me congratulate everyone and each one of you that participated in the production and most Above all, you, Maria, for getting all these wonderful people together and giving this uh, wonderful day to us. Um, it's, I have a comment that builds upon the previous point that was raised about uh, identity and how it is formulated. And from my point of view, there is absolutely no problem of being a landless person if you choose to and if it's a conscious decision and takes away a hell of a lot of stress from everyone in the position of father, in the position of being a grandfather, in the position of being a child. If we embrace it and then see what we are going to do about it, it's much better than feeling the pressure of, and I recall a paper that I read about, the omnipresent society, which is everywhere trying to look and criticize. If we just don't care about that bit, I think we will handle much better our own consciousness, existence, identity. And one more com common, comment more related to what we've seen, I would like to ask the three um, uh, directors you have there, uh, to give us, if possible, a brief reflection on the notion of borders that you mentioned, Mary, in the beginning of, of, of this day. Uh, as I was watching the films, I, I was constantly thinking about crossing or remaining within borders as an individual and as a collective, as, as a member or as a head of a collective. And again, that connects with the formation of identity and then different elements that make us who we are. And in, in the stories, 
I think everyone made his own or her own thoughts about those borders and who is crossing them, who is staying within, what's the position of the society inside the films and outside of the films, because production is another border that, I guess, you talk about funding, you talk about all those technicalities, which is, again, are reflected within the film themselves. But from the point of view of the directors, I wonder, in each specific film that we've seen of the three, what, how this conversation between crossing or staying within boundaries as an individual and then as a collective comes across into the storyline. Thank you. It was a hard question, I messed maybe. it up. <laughs> <laughs> it's better to mess up from this side of the audience than where you are. <laughs> I would say that Pandeli's uh, film crosses like genre borders, or the human and the non-human, if we take it too philosophically. Uh, that's, that's a way to, uh, to, to look it up. Um, but uh, boundaries and borders yeah. are, are clearer in your, in your film, I think. Yeah, even though I'm, I'm, it's about mental borders. Uh, um, yeah, like I said, I, at the time I was sort of trying to convince myself that you know everything everything's fine everything's happy i was creating this illusion this border around me and uh, but one of the best things i did i think was finally crossing it like leaving that place behind me and uh, yeah i said i i was working at this job and uh, i did this film a month later i, I quit <laughs> and uh, yeah, I've, I've been feeling <laughs> much, much better now. Um, but yeah, uh, I think we always tend to limit ourselves by staying in our comfort zone. But uh, it's very interesting when we try to get out of it, try new things, see what our true limits are, how far we can get. I'm, I don't know if I'm answering your question, I'm just... <laughs> Oh, there is no right and wrong. It's uh, it's yeah. a matter of uh, you know yeah. interpretation of uh, of emotions, I guess. So I think uh, when it comes to mental uh, barriers, it's it's up to each individual. It's uh, yeah. Anthony, your film is about actually crossing borders, literally, literally yeah, in, on a more literal level. Yeah, but I mean, how, how did I look at when I made my film? How was I looking at crossing borders? Um, I, I'm going to go back to when we were talking about being Cypriot and I, our identities, because I'd rather talk about that, which might help. Like I, I was born in 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 London as a, and my parents are both Cypriot, and I um, I when I was growing up, I grew up in Edmonton and Tottenham, and I I felt like I I was I I didn't have an identity, and I. Because my father was from Rizogarpason uh, and my mum was from Dimbo, both um, from the from the northern side, and I, I, they were always talking to me about how beautiful, especially Rizogarpason, and and I had this vision in my head growing up as a kid that I wanted to go back. I wanted to go back to my motherland because I felt very, very attached to it because of what I've heard and and the culture and uh, there's probably lots of English-born Cypriots here. That we held on to those those cultures and that culture and that those family values, and when I so in, when I was 17, I got signed for a Bolona football club, and my parents sold everything and went to Cyprus so I could play football, and I had to uh, do national service in order to get my work permit and in order to play, and I felt when I when I went back to Cyprus, I felt. Like I was going home. I didn't. I didn't feel wanted here in in London. I didn't feel like I belonged. And okay. um, when I went back to Cyprus, I I was confronted by a, a very similar feeling and a very similar feeling of not being accepted and not being part of it. Someone mentioned Billy and Charlie in one of the films. <laughs> but, um, and I I did the army, which was a nightmare because I was only doing six months as a an an English Greek, so I got lots of stick for that. And, but I had to keep my mouth shut so I wouldn't get prison, you know, like Philagin, because I really wanted to play football. And I, I, got through the, uh, I got through the army, and 
my first professional game against Addis, I tore my cruciate ligament and I had to retire. <laughs> and I just was lost, I was completely lost. And I come, I come back to London, I come back to London, and my parents stayed in Cyprus and every, they stayed there until they were in their 80s and now they've come back. But, and I used to go back and just to, because I don't want it to be just all doom and gloom, I have noticed that the, it's a lot, we're a lot more accepted now and I, I feel a lot more separate and I'm, I'm very proud, proud of it. And you, pro you know, on my IMDB, it's Cypriot filmmaker <laughs> in London. And I feel very, I think, I think the, the walls are coming down, our walls, our, our divides, our boundaries. Yeah. If that helps, they, our borders, I think. Sorry? I am, I'm in the middle of writing it now and that's gonna be my next film, so if you wanna support it. Because yeah. <laughs> it's self-funded, I should have bought a bucket so, and you could um, some money in. <laughs> two more questions, yeah, first Angelos and then Chriso, uh, Katerina, uh, uh, Katerina. Late. Okay. Hello. Um, Hello. Thank you very much for that wonderful um, session of um, uh, showing all these uh, quite uh, quite impressive and amazing films. Actually, I feel quite relieved personally because the obsession with um, certain themes uh, is slightly going. I think that the idea of, of identity is overstated. It's becoming a bit obsessive. We don't lose our identity by daring our imagination or um, attacking themes that are taboo or, or, or sort of deviating from uh, from what is blessed and approved and richly funded, let's put it that way as well. I think that was an excellent uh, selection of um, short films, perhaps not all of them, but most of them. The amazing thing is that um, they have, uh, they break through with the, the, ex the boldness the insistence of stating what they want to say, their immediacy, which is very important. It's, it's one of the rare things to get the immediate impact of filming, which is, for me, is a clearly filmic thing to actually state the presence of the film or the presence of the audience as well, uh, in a direct and, and strong way. You know, it was, the images were strong and they really emphasized the idea of seeing something and not really trying to escape into something. Uh, I think that was excellent. Uh, I loved all the films, but uh, some better than others. Okay. And congratulations anyway. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, Cool. How can I work from here? Um, first, thank you very much. It was very interesting to watch the films, and you know, watching you know actual films make kind of a little bit more sense. But when it comes to the animation one, and that's a question for the AB. I'm going away from this Greek Cypriot talk. Sorry about that. Um, so you showed you know like um, a kid that had a hexagon or a pentagon face, and showcasing a lot of uh, triangles and, and shapes in the film. And I was trying to actually understand whether that had any sort of meaning having um, a face that was not a uh, you know like oval and it was hexagon because because she was trying to get she was trying to save the bee and because of the the beehives and when they make their honey they're kind of hexagon shaped so that was why it was running through the whole film okay sorry maybe i should have sorry, got that very sorry, interesting no, observation wasn't. thank you glad you noticed picked up on that actually yes no but, but it the, was very apart from that meaning there's nothing deeper than that that, that that's good <laughs> angelos thank you mary um thanks to uh, to all of you uh, i've got a question for uh, for andreas actually two two brief questions i couldn't help thinking of of lanthimos dog tooth um oh, wow. when i watch your um your film so i was wondering if if that was a bit of an inspiration or if you if you're happy to to put the two films in a bit of a dialogue um, and the other question is about the poster. I was very impressed about the poster that you chose to, um, to use. Uh, and the question is whether um, you, that was clear for you and very easy to decide what kind of poster you would like to have there or, or whether you thought about it a lot. Um, is it possible that you could have a bit of um, a more abstract or vague thing? Um, yeah, that's... Uh, okay. 
about the the, f the first question, uh, I don't no, I don't think I had uh, dog tooth in my. Well, I love uh, Lanthimos. I love his style, his uh, the, the aesthetic that uh, his films have. But uh, no, I don't, I don't think uh, that this particular film was in, maybe maybe subconsciously, but I didn't have that in in my mind when I was filming it. Um, about the uh, the poster. Originally, I just wanted to have uh, posters of uh, a sky and a nice blue sky with the uh, mountains and all that. But when we started uh, storyboarding and uh, looking at the, how we were going to shoot it, I realized that at the very beginning of the film, when I, I wanted to establish it, if I ever wanted to cut to that window, and it would just be, if it were just the sky, it would sort of, it could have given it away. That was like, maybe the audience would wonder why is he cutting to the window of a sky. So that's why we, I put the a woman there, so it would give some sort of a reason to cut to that. Maybe mislead a bit. And uh, yeah, but then and it's, if you want to take it a bit, I don't know, further, you could say that oh, he's also he has the woman there to give that human element. So, but yeah, it was, it was more of a technical reason, just so that it wouldn't give away that it was a f fake poster, so that it, the audience wouldn't wonder why is he showing that window. I wanted to reveal it later. So I just, yeah, we, we used that woman. But yeah, we did a lot of research as to what image we, I, looked, I looked at a lot of stock footage. And it was actually, we, uh, my, my mom is a graphic designer, so she composed it two different or three maybe different images, and we created that one. So yeah, th there was some thought put into it, but yeah, it was a combination of technical reasons. And Great, thank you so much, guys. Thank you for being here. Thank you, thank you, the audience, for being here. I just, I just, we may continue our discussion, and you can uh, meet the directors in person. Um, at the back again at the private dining room for more drinks, maybe. <laughs> Thank you for coming.